Hello guys and welcome to one more Play It Right video. Today I'm gonna show you how to play Project L, a new fast-paced Tetris-like board game by Board Cubator. In Project L, you basically match tiles, build an engine, upgrade pieces, and try to perfect your strategy to win the most points. I'm gonna start with the basic rules for the game for two to four players. I've also made a how to play for the solo mode of the game, which you can find somewhere here. Let's start by checking out what you'll find in this neat box. You have these puzzles in black and white, and the colorful little pieces from level 1 going up to level 2, 3 and 4. Each player starts the game with a level 1 and a level 2 tile and a player mat randomly. The player who receives the first player player mat will start the game. What you see here set up is a game for 3 players. We have a shuffle deck of white puzzles and one of black puzzles. In our case, for three players, it's 14 black puzzles for the black deck. You reveal the top four puzzles from each deck and you place all of the colored pieces in a reserve nearby. During the game, you want to have a variety of shapes and levels so that you can complete increasingly more difficult puzzles and earn more and more points. Each puzzle has a recessed area in which you want to fit your pieces snugly to complete it. Once you complete it, you gain the new piece depicted here and gives you that many points at the end of the game. The pieces you use to complete it return back to your personal supply and you place the puzzle face down in your victory point pile. You can also leave them face up if all players agree to play a more competitive game. As you can see, white and black puzzles are a bit different. White puzzles are more like a base to get you started as they are easier to complete and give you low amount of points. The black puzzles are a bit more difficult and they offer more generous points. The game is played over a number of rounds. In each round, and beginning with the first player and going clockwise, each player takes a turn and this continues until the black puzzle deck is empty, at which point the end of the game is triggered. Players complete that round and then play one final round. On your turn, you must take three actions. There are five uh, available actions you can do. One is the take action, which allows you to take any one of the puzzles and place it above your player mat. You always replace the puzzles you took from the row with another one from the corresponding puzzle deck. Alternatively, you can blindly take the top puzzle from either of the decks. You can only have a maximum of four unfinished puzzles open in front of you at any one time during the game. Another action is the upgrade action. With this, you can either take uh, a new level one piece from the reserve and add it to your personal supply, or you can return a piece and take a replacement for it. The replacement may be from the same level or any level lower or up to one level higher. Another action is the recycle action, in which you choose one of the rows of puzzles, remove all the puzzles from that row, place them on the bottom of the corresponding deck in an order of your choice, and then refill the row with four new puzzles from the top. We also have the place action. You place one piece from your supply into one of your puzzles in any way you want. You can rotate it or flip it. But remember that once placed, a piece can never be moved again. Last, we have the master action, which you can do only once per turn. It is like the place action, but you can do it simultaneously to all open puzzles that you have in front of you. You place up to one piece from your personal supply into each puzzle above your player mat. You may choose to not place a piece on a puzzle if you don't want to. This is a very cool action to do if you have multiple open puzzles in front of you and the right tiles to put in them, as this boosts your engine. So these were the actions you can do in your turn. Play goes on like this until the black deck is empty and the end of the game is triggered. 
you finish the current round and you play one final round so that all players have played the same amount of turns. Each player may now only take a maximum of one block puzzle during their turn. After the final round ends, each player may place any number of pieces from their supply into their open puzzles. This is called finishing touches. For each piece placed this way, you deduct one a point from that player's final score. And then players count up their points, which are the total of the points on all the puzzles in their victory point pile, minus the points for each incomplete puzzle, and minus the one point for every piece they place during finishing touches. And the player with the most points wins. The tiebreaker in case of a tie is the number of completed puzzles. If there is still a tie, then the player with the most leftover pieces wins. And that's all you need to know in order to start your first game of Project L. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it. And I'll see you in the next video.